calibrated in the uh, GX636D, okay. Um, in the service manual, it tells you the procedure to use, but I won't be following this exactly because um, they talk about three and three quarter inches per second, but no one uh, will be recording anymore at that lower speed. They'll be using the seven and a half, and uh, also the tape they suggest, the Scotch 211, but um, it's best to calibrate it using the tape you're going to use. Um, the various things you ca calibrate from the VU meter, the playback amps, the record amps, and uh, adjusting the frequency response as well at high frequencies. Uh, there's a bias filter you can check as well, but won't, uh, never needs checking. Um, and uh, there's lots of little adjustments on the circuit board. They give you a picture of the circuit board and where all the potentiometers are, all labelled. It's not very clear from this where they are. Uh, you can print out a much bigger uh, picture of the circuit board. And then you can put um, what they do, where the connectors are. You can, what I do, so that I don't get confused. On the board, there are. It's at the bottom. You have to take the bottom of the of the player off the case, and to get the circuit board and all the little potentiometers are through these holes. Lots of little holes, and here, here, here. Uh, to adjust it, you can't really do it from the other side because you can't get in with all the gubbins in the way. So you've got to do it from the bottom. It is written on in very small letters what it is reverse forward left right you can hardly read it so it's best to have a little chart so you know you turn the right ones um the first thing to do is make sure your vu meters are reading on the left and right accurately you will be using the vu meters uh to set it up so if they're not reading properly you will uh never calibrate it um, the best way to check the VU meters is to put in the signal on left and right of a fixed amplitude so the left and right gets the same. They recommend having a test tape to do it. Uh, most people wouldn't have a test tape, even I don't have one. Uh, they're hard to find or buy and probably very expensive. So... Um, Anyway, we can set the VU meters up uh, using uh, an app on, a, on a, a tablet like this now, or a smartphone. You just need um, the frequency. They suggest um, 700 hertz. Uh, I've got 800 hertz. You can set the voltage output. Uh, it's about 0.75. Um, approximately, you can move this up and down bit sensitive and it tells you the voltage there I don't know why it goes away <laughs> anyway get it about right and um, then uh, it comes out here turn it turn it on there comes out feed it in stereo put the monitor on and look at the uh, displays and they seem to be pretty spot-on uh, to adjust them, if you look at the, uh, on here, it talks about VR5s. VR5s are over here in the, on the edge of the board. And in fact, they're here. There's one there left and one there right. So you can tw twiddle them if you want to get the VU meters reading spot on. After the VU meters have been done, you need to set the playback amps. Now the playback amps come just before the VU meters. The VU meters have come directly from the line input. And the playback amps come directly off of the playback heads down here. There's two, a left and a right, obviously channels, and there's also a pot for the um, forward direction and the reverse direction. So you've got four pots, two for one direction, left and right, and two for the other direction. And uh, on the playback amps, 
you need to uh, have a signal going in that you know is the same in both directions and both channels. Uh, unless you've got a test tape, which you haven't, or a stereo recording, which you may not have, uh, that's got the same on both channels, you'll have to make one. The only way you can do this is from a machine that you know is working uh, and is calibrated correctly, one like this. And then you can um, make put in a, your test frequency, say a kilohertz, 15 kilohertz, 100 hertz, whatever. Set the levels on um, left and right, and also set the levels in the other direction as well. And then um, use this uh, as to play it back on your uh, other machine, and um, check that the levels are the same on left and right. So I've recorded this previously. Um, I've recorded it at uh, 1 kilohertz, 15 kilohertz, and 100 hertz both ways. And I can play it back on here. And we first of all, you set the replay um, so that the signals are perfectly equal on both channels. And after you've done that, when you make your recordings, which are then played back through the playback amps, you know that the playback amps are not changing the levels. So then you can set your record levels, your frequency uh, bias in, and everything else. Uh, just one note, uh, there's a switch on here for low noise and wide range tapes. Well, the low noise one actually is a capacitor that takes the high frequencies off. So you don't want that, so switch it to wide range and always leave it on wide range. Um, there are capacitors for three and three quarters and seven and a half. Uh, just leave it on wide range. The bias ones we'll be uh, adjusting as well for high frequency. They're extremely sensitive little capacitors. Uh, they're little capacitor plates squeezed by a bolt and you have to turn them a tiny bit. I'll be showing you that later. There is an overall bias uh, power here, which is the uh, bias in for the tape. Uh, you can turn the bias power up. It's fixed for three and three quarters, but you can turn it up and down for seven and a half. Normally you find an optimum maximum point uh, for your tape. But on some tapes the bias will be set to maximum. You, you never seem strong enough. Um, if you understand this circuit diagram, it's all pretty straightforward uh, how it works. Lots of potentiometers everywhere. So um, we've done the VU meters, so uh, I'm going to put the tape on and um, do the playback amps. Okay, I've made the uh, the test tape with the tones, uh, one kilohertz tone, uh, recorded to zero dB on each channel. Uh, I'm just going to replay the uh, reverse one and looking at the VUs on this player slightly down about one so um, you can turn them up here reverse play this one on the left you can set it to zero and the one on the right you can do the same reverse play this one here near enough zero Go okay, check the replay amp in the other direction. Um, as you can see, the left channel's a bit down, so we can adjust that here. Set to zero. And uh, the right one's a tiny bit down too, so we just adjust that as well. That's uh, about right, and then we we'll do the check the high frequency when it comes on. Okay, adjusting the 15 kilohertz with the uh, azimuth screw here. Just uh, watch the dials goes down, goes up, up, down, up. Get the uh, peak it out there. So it's got the signals right on the replay on this one. We've done that one as well. 
it's all looking good. You can adjust the um, amplitude if necessary. Now we've adjusted the heads. Checking the azimuth alignment at high frequency in going in this direction. So that's the record. This is a replay head. And this is the azimuth adjustment, which will twist the head uh, sideways like that, which uh, align the uh, tape up. You want it dead vertical. So when we replay it on here, we should see an adjustment. Let's have a look as we turn it. Goes down, goes down. So there's Max. It was in the uh, in the perfect position. Uh, the other one, the alignment of tape uh, forward and back, uh, like this, is the pressure of the, uh, as it goes over the head. Um, you don't want it uh, pushing harder at the top and the bottom, which give you a slight variation in signal. Uh, that's probably best done at um, one kilohertz. I don't think it will work at um, high frequency. Turn it one way, turn it the other way. Yeah, as you can see, it was already set at the, at the best position. Right, checking the uh, replay head alignment in uh, this direction. This direction, we just adjust the head here, watch the meters, they go down, they go up, well, they go up quite a lot, and then down, so get the maximum point, which is there, and then when we put the high frequency on, they do the azimuth screw, which uh, twists the head that way. So we managed to get a little more gain out of it. I can adjust the replay heads again in a minute after we've done the high frequency. Okay, checking at 20 kilohertz. Just check the head alignment. Goes down, goes up, down, up. That's the maximum point there. So the heads are pretty well aligned at high frequency. Just to check it. Uh, 20 kilohertz signal. Um, it wasn't recorded to 0 dB, so it's done pretty well. Uh, it was recorded about minus 2, so um, it's this left hand channel is just a fraction down. Fraction, you could try the azimuth. No, I can't get that one up any higher than there. So that's gone off now. The VU meters have been. Uh, calibrated and the replay amps have been uh, set exactly left and right in both directions uh, calibrated and the replay heads the azimuth and alignments of the heads have been done so now it's on to the record now the record has um, more adjustments you've not only got adjustments on the amplifier on the record amplifier, you've got an adjustment for the strength. You've also got a bias adjustments for record for strength at high frequencies. There's also an overall bias uh, oscillator strength there. And then, of course, you've got the head alignments and azimuths. So it can be a bit of a fiddle uh, working your way through. You have to do a couple of adjustments. The, um, the uh, capacitor adjustments for high frequency uh, they're very sensitive, fraction of a turn squeezes the plates on the capacitors and they're uh, quite stiff to turn so and there's a little slot, very tiny slot in the head of the uh, screw and you have to find a screwdriver that will fit in it. Um, as usual there's four to adjust, two for each way and um, you need your decent tape that you're going to use once it's all set up uh, you'll need um, an app or signal generator in this case uh, you can use um, a signal generator app on your on your lap on your laptop or tablet or smartphone 
This one does um, left and right channel. You can lock them together so that you get both the same outputs. You can adjust the frequency uh, up to 20,000 kilohertz. And you can adjust the output gain. It's also got a very useful uh, pink noise and white noise where you can listen after you've set it up and see if it sounds right. So with all that to do, the first thing to do is to record a signal at 1 kilohertz. Uh, on one direction we do and then you record it on the other direction and um, adjust the replay amp, a uh, record amp so that the signal being recorded and coming out is exactly the right level on left and right so just set that up set them 1 kilohertz, both channels same output uh, and I, these are uh, set to max, and I uh, set them to zero by adjusting the gain on here to zero on here. That's obviously the signal going in. And uh, we're going to record um, these first. Sorry. Take that off. Uh, we're going to record in this direction. Right. And there's your levels coming out. Um, bit high so I'm just gonna get the screwdriver and adjust them can you just find the right one for the direction and the channel turn that down to zero and turn the other one down to zero so it's uh, zero going in and zero coming out. Okay, just go the other direction. Slight adjustment in the other direction. Zero out. That way. Uh, zero out that way. So that's uh, in out in out okay i said it's a uh, high frequency and do the high frequency which is uh, much more fiddly right high frequency a uh, record 15 kilohertz um the signal i didn't change the amplitude the bu meters are nearly on zero i'm not gonna mess around with them um we can check the alignment though uh so that's the signal going in. Let's do the tape. And it's almost um, just a tiny little bit under, hardly anything. Um, it's coming this way now. So this is the um, azimuth adjustment on this record head. Um, was almost spot on it's just under the zero um, actually this is the azimuth yep it's quite critical as you can see it was set properly so I've done the head alignment and azimuth now just slightly under um, you can turn that up with these um, capacitor uh, little things here they're quite difficult to turn so I'm just going I'm not sure if I want to mess with them as it's only just under the setting let's see that's signal going in signal coming out oh it's tiny I'm not sure if I those capacitors are quite sensitive to, to adjust ok I've had to go adjusting the high frequency capacitors uh, you should be using a non-magnetic screwdriver, but I don't have one that is this small. Because when you put it on the adjuster, these are non-magnetic screws in the in these things. Uh, it obviously affects the circuit, which is run at high frequency. And when you take the 
screwdriver off it, it jumps. Um, so I've done the left one quite well. I'll just uh, tweak it a tiny bit if I can. There, see that moving? And as I take the screwdriver off, drive off, it jumps. So I've just got to get the right one done. I'm just set testing at uh, 70 hertz as well, just to check the linearity. Uh, signal going in. Or is that out? Anyway, as you can see, it's uh, a small variation on the right channel. I don't need to worry about Let's do the other way. There you go. 70 hertz. I think that's close enough. But not having to fiddle around with because the one kilohertz and the 15 kilohertz were spot on. Right, I've adjusted the two bias uh, capacitors and got it near spot on zero zero. Um, oops, sorry. There's signal in, signal out, signal in, signal out. So that's pretty good. I'll just double check the other way. Right, uh, double checking the other way. Um, tiny tiny bit down but it's going to be close enough so that's the record amps uh, and the bias and the head alignments done in both directions so it's all um just about uh finished now i haven't adjusted the overall bias um for the tape uh, there's one control here that gives you the strength of bias but as it's working so well i don't think i'll fiddle with that um it's normally set on maximum on these machines anyway. So I just need to make um, a test um, audio. Uh, can try the white noise and pink noise as well. Okay, a white noise test, which is uh, audio right across the spectrum. You've just pressed that on the white noise. I don't know if you can hear that uh, white noise going in. Now the white noise coming out. Let's just uh, do this direction. No change in sound quality perceived by me anyway of my speakers. So, right, pink noise, which is um, uh, not got such a high frequency content. Um, white noise is best for overall, but here's the pink noise going in. Let's start it, start it off. Pink noise out, pink noise in. Sounds the same, let's do the other way. Sounds the same to me. So that all sounds good. Alright, make a audio recording um, from the from here. Uh, the Who we do, uh, I can't explain. I'll keep the volume down uh, mostly so YouTube don't pull it. Um, let's just do it uh, in one direction and the other. Um, should we start it off and uh, start this up? So we've got tape monitor here. Can't tell any difference at all between the um, sounds in that direction. That scraping sound, by the way, is because it's laying on its back and the uh, the brake is just touching the spool. Um, let's go the other way. In, out, in, out. Yeah, sounding perfect. That's a uh, seven and a half. Uh, got the wide range always pressed in. 
I don't think anyone would ever use three and three quarters to record a song or anything, only for speech and that. Um, go the other way. Yeah, it's all looking perfect. So, um, done everything now. Uh, just got to screw it all back together again. And um, it'll be finished. I've put all the front panel and everything and the back panel back on. But not the uh, top just yet. Because I'm just checking that the uh, spools are still uh, working in line. Uh, just playing this uh, tape to make sure that... Um, they're about dead center of the plastic spool. This one is slightly, very slightly to one side, but the other side is just fine. I did line them up before. There's a lot of um, problem with adjusting these spool depths. And when you fit metal spools on the hubs, uh, again, you get um, a different spacing again, but um, I wanted to make sure it was good enough. I think it is uh, good enough. So, and uh, this tape was uh, recorded on another Akai machine. Uh, it's recorded from a couple of um, Garrard LP play index. Uh, just uh, checking that uh, it's playing fine. It sounds uh, really good as well. So um, I'm just going to check it with a couple of uh, big spools on it and then I'll put the top on and um, uh, that'd be all I can do. I'm just going to check the spool alignment with these two uh, Max L uh, aluminium spools. Uh, they're quite thick. Uh, use these Akai uh, hubs. Uh, they've got two positions on the hub. Uh, there's a dot here which you line up with the dot on the table which gives you uh, about one millimeter in. And if you don't line the dot, dot up, uh, the locating is are um, moved at one millimeter out. So uh, you do that to get the tape to run exactly in the middle of the spool. So this is really uh, was a pre-recorded tape a really, really good um, Maxell uh, quality uh, tape. Uh, make sure you put it on uh, 10 inch full size. Always have the um, this low noise uh, wide range, always wide range, so that's for record only. Uh, speed seven and a half, of course. And uh, we'll start it off. And um, I'm going to check that the tape runs in the middle of the spool, which it is. <laughs> these spools are always slightly distorted these days, and uh, that's why I think um, sometimes people they rub on the t on the top here and make a horrible mark. But anyway, these are okay. So um, looks like I'll be able to. Screw it on. Be able to screw the top on. Okay, there's the levels. Uh, this was recorded on another deck, so it uh, looks like it's pretty compatible on levels. Looks nice with the Maxell spools, so... Um, really fine sound index, these Akai's. Uh, really, really good. So um, this is the 636, and this one behind is a 635. All the electronics are the same. There's small mechanical differences, uh, very small on the um, switching. They changed the front panel a bit, but all the electronics inside are the same. So if you buy a 635 or 636, you're going to get fantastic performance.